are you? If someone were to ask you that question, how would you identify yourself? Sometimes our identity comes from our family name. Um, our last name says who, what family we belong to. And it tells other people that we belong with this family and we belong together, we're part of this group. Um, it, we may be identified by being the mother of somebody. Many, many years as parents, we know that we are identified through the kids that, oh, that's so-and-so's mom uh, um, or so-and-so's dad. Uh, we may be identified by our parents. Um, my dad became a pastor when I was 19 and, and I went from being just a normal person to all of a sudden I was a pastor's kid. And that was a new role for me. I never heard that before. So that our identity was wrapped, my identity was wrapped up in who my father was. And sometimes it can be our spouse. Uh, oh, that's so-and-so's wife or so-and-so's husband. And uh, all of a sudden that changes as women. Our, our family name changes. Our identity changes when we get married. And now I'm Yannick Legoff's wife and my chin name changes to his name. So sometimes our identity is wrapped up in who we're related to or what family we belong to. Um, sometimes it can be wrapped up and, and de defined by what we do, um, whether you're a teacher or a, a farmer or a carpenter or a CEO of a big business. Um, our identity can come from being who our, our job that we do and how we function and how we make our living. Um, sometimes it's, it's wrapped up in the things that we're passionate about, um, maybe an artist or someone really good at sports. I think of Josiah uh, Friesen at the, as the youth pastor. I think of him as a hockey player and he loves hockey and he talks about it a lot and he loves to play it. So sometimes our identity can be wrapped up in what we do and what we're passionate about. Um, so yeah, and also our identity can sometimes come from shortcomings. Um, people in our lives have put labels on us or, or identities on us that we cling to and we hang on to. Uh, maybe growing up in a home where you're, you know, you've had parents that weren't really um, what they should have been. We can grow up believing I'm not good enough. I'm unloved. I'm damaged goods. Uh, living with shame or a victim mentality. Some people hang on to that as their identity and they, they think that that's who they are. And they portray that to other people as, as their identity. Um, with uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, I know when I went once to a meeting and they teach the people in their group to identify themselves as alcoholics. And it, it's probably a good thing because then they recognize their weaknesses. And that's what they're taught to do to actually identify and, and uh, admit that they have a problem. I was at one of the meetings one time with a friend who was getting her cake and uh, everybody went around the circle and they all gave their names. Hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. When it came to my turn, I thought, what am I going to say? So I just said, hey, I'm Julie and I'm a sinner saved by grace. And they all seemed to accept that and, and like that because I was not putting myself above them. I was on, on level with them. I, I'm just as bad. It, just because I'm not an alcoholic doesn't mean I don't need help. And so, yeah, our identity can be something like that. Um, sometimes sin identifies people. Um, someone is a thief or murderer or a liar. Um, someone coming out of prison, they ha live with a terrible identity, having a hard time rebuilding their life because of the crimes that they've committed and they have to rebuild and try and, and, and change their identity. Um, sometimes illness will d identify and <laughs> identify people. Um, uh, some years ago, I di diagnosed with celiac disease. And when I was talking to someone about that, they said to me, yeah, or someone who had it, they said, yeah, I don't tell people I am a celiac. They say I have celiac disease. And she, she said to me, I don't want to be identified by my disease as who I am. And I thought, that's a good point. That's a really good point. I'm not a celiac. I have celiac disease. So, but some people do carry their illnesses and their disease as an identity and uh, they make that part of who they are. Uh, money, power, age, race, gender, there's so many things that de dictate who we are in society. And identity seems to be something that people really struggle with nowadays. And we know that from the, the gender issues that are happening in society. Um, our identity directs our life and how we feel about the world around us. 
and what our role is and our position is compared to other people. Sometimes we can have our identities stripped away. Um, for example, a woman who's lost her husband is no longer that person's wife and that can change or divorce. Uh, you can go from being a, a woman who's married to a, a single mom or something and then your identity completely changes and you have to adjust and, and adjust to this new role and this new way of life. It can be very difficult. Uh, losing your job um, for someone who their whole identity is wrapped up in what they do all of a sudden loses their job or gets fired or, or the business shuts down or whatever. Um, they lose that identity and it crushes their soul and it's just like pulling the rug out from under them and so, and then they have to try and figure out all over again who they are when our identity is built on things that are not certain uh, it's like shifting sand uh, it's not stable and we can find ourselves suddenly trying to redefine our whole lives everything we thought we were can be lost and we have to start all over again but there is an identity that we can have that can will never change and that is who God sees us as. And uh, if we are believers in, in God and have a faith in Jesus Christ, who has paid the ransom for our sins, uh, we have a new identity. And I wanna read some of these to you. Who does God say we are? As for family, we are the children of God, John 1, 12. We are created in the image of God, Genesis 1, 27. We are new creations. And that is one of my favorite verses. Uh, the old is gone, the new has come. Second Corinthians five seventeen. We are free from con condemnation. Romans eight one and two. We are created for good works. Ephesians two ten. We are the temple temple of the Holy Spirit, and He who lives in us. In First Corinthians three sixteen. And we are forgiven, Ephesians 1, 7. And there's so much more in the scriptures that talks about who we are in God's perspective. And that can never be taken away from us. That can never be changed. I'm going to read a scripture from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. It says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above not on the earthly things, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in, in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. So set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Set your identity in Jesus Christ and who he is and what God has done for you and who he has created you to be. And that can never be taken away from you. That will never change. And that is the only sure thing that we can stand on. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. If you have not made that commitment to Jesus Christ and do not know him as your Lord and Savior, um, please call the church and one of the staff can talk to you and pray with you. And you can find out how you can have a whole new identity in Christ. God bless you.